Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Brittany. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below this and like this video if you did like it. So really quickly, I wanted to explain to you guys what we are doing to the room. Um, this is my master bedroom right now. Well, they're organized. What we want to do is we want to upgrade it a little bit and add a sliding barn door. And since they're super expensive to buy from like people who just do them themselves, we decided to do them ourselves and we found it pretty efficient. I think we only spent, I want to say like 140 at the most. Um, and so in this video, we're just going to be showing you exactly what we did for measurements, equipment, supplies, and how we accomplished the door. So if you would like to know how we built our barn door, then just keep on watching. Okay, so first what we did was we measured out how big we wanted the door to be and obviously you want it to be big enough to fill this gap um when we measured how big this gap was it's about three feet however we made it a little bit bigger because we didn't want the cracks to show light between here because we're just trying to block this off so we have a little more dark during the day because that's when Derek goes to sleep so we knew that it had to be at least three foot wide and then when you're starting this make sure you have a big enough wall to where your door can open and close fine without hitting anything on each side and being able to like close all the way. And then we measured from top to bottom. So let's see, right about here was about five and a half feet. So we got six foot boards. So the metal piece of, which i'll show you guys later um bolts onto a piece of wood which is this piece right here this will go on the top after we cut it down but it goes across like that and then this is what we nail the metal bracket onto and then we also you can do whatever you want for the design but we got i'll show you guys what boards we did buy for this but we're doing a board across here and then one diagonally down the center and then another board on the bottom and then I will bring you guys to the garage to show you what we got so first this board this is a one by eight um, because the railing that comes in the kit is six by six six foot by six inches so this is eight foot we're not going to keep it this long we're going to cut it down but for this top piece you want to make sure you have this for the metal piece to screw onto it. I stained these pieces of wood to all of it, so I'll show you guys what stain that is. So, Provencil 211 by Mini Wax is the stain that um, I used for this wood, and staining is super easy if you don't know it already. You just literally use, open this can up, um, and we use just a towel, um, and then you just dab it in the stain and do small circles. So, essentially, sorry if it's kind of dark, this is what our barn door is going to look like. Um, it's going to be a little bit smaller. So, our opening space is three foot, and we kind of wanted wider boards rather than, um, these are one by sixes, and we didn't want one by fours because we just want, like, the larger board look. So we got seven of these. Yeah, we got seven of these. These are one by six by six because our height for our barn door is six foot tall. And then we got these one by six by four. We got two of those. And then we got, this one was a one by six by six. So this is a lot wider than three feet. We're planning on maybe cutting these boards down to make a border around it, but I'll let you guys know if we do anything different. So, what we're thinking, and hopefully that works, uh, that these boards hold the underlying boards, like the actual structure of this, together. Um, but I also did get wood glue. So, we are going to glue all of these boards together and then also glue this pretty much all of them together, but we're also gonna screw them too. And if you're using one inch thick boards like us, obviously you'll need um, a one inch or less 
for the screws because you don't want them to protrude in the back. And you guys can do any different design too. Like it's super easy to make it like your own. Like you can add another one. That's what we were saying. If the boards don't hold well together, we're gonna add another diagonal piece just to make it a little bit more supportive. And then you'll need a handle as well, which we haven't gotten yet, but I will get one. This is the header board that I showed you guys in the previous clip. And then what we did is we just put one screw in the middle just to keep it up there right now. And then we made sure it was level. Um, Derek said before you want to do any of this, find all the studs in the wall so you know what you can support the boards on. So Derek put a bunch of screws in this board, as you guys saw. Um, it doesn't matter if they're not even because you're not even going to be able to see them. And what are you doing right now, babe? You're drilling. The screws for the track. So he pre-drilled a hole for this right here, and why? So it goes in easier. Because right, they're big screws. So we have these bolts in, they have little spacers on the back, and we're just gonna do the same exact thing to the other side. You gotta show them the, the screws in the back on how we did it. Show them. We used one inch screws. One inch so they didn't protrude. Do the front. All right, so yeah, since these boards are one inch each. One by six. Or one by six. You used a one inch screw for all of these. At first, turn it a little bit, babe. We used, or I said, oh, shit, the tree. <laughs> so at first I said that we used wood glue for these pieces, but the wood glue sucked. So that didn't stick. So Derek screwed all the pieces in and it holds it, hold it together. So we're gonna bring this upstairs and start hanging it. You'll need a strong man for this part. So this is what it's gonna look like now. I'm so excited, it's not hung up yet, so. I will show you guys what we do next. So this is all in the directions, but Derek is just screwing on bump stops so the door doesn't really swing back and forth too much or fall off. So what we did is we held the door up with this thing on it. We measured evenly how far we wanted it on the board and then made marks for these holes so we can screw them on there evenly. Yeah. Right when they connect it's both spot and it's in it. You have to get a close up, man. Yeah. 
Okay, I have it. So we just measured our brackets, drill the holes, and then. Okay, so what we did was we measured out. This is all on the directions, by the way, but we measured out where these two bolts were going to go and set it up, bolt them, bolted them in on each side, and then it came with two bump stops to stop the door from going this way and then stop the door from hitting the wall that way. And then, honestly, the only thing we have left to do is um, get a handle for the actual door to um, slide it back and forth. And then um, we actually took those little rubber bump stops that I showed you guys. We took those off because it wasn't even, so we're probably going to get smaller ones, and that kind of stops the door from going back and forth, like swaying back and forth. But it's not so bad right now, so... That's what it looks like complete.